Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mei Sukyong Park. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a one layer watercolor card using the floral sunflower stem from Hero Arts and Mijello Mission Gold 36 watercolor set. Before I share my card making tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick overview of Hero Arts 2019 summer catalog. If you don't want to watch, feel free to skip this part to jump onto the card making process. Now I'm going to turn on some music and I'll be back soon. As usual, I'll show you my craft desk after my project is done, so make sure to watch the video to the end. So let's get started. Since this video is part of Hero Arts 45th anniversary block hop, I was going to use a birthday sentiment on my card. So I pulled out a couple of birthday stamp sets. I chose the floral sunflower stamp as my main image because I thought this big flower would be great for creating a custom background and fun for water coloring as it has lots of petals. I already test out the placement of my floral images on a couple of A2 size print papers. As I said earlier, I was going to use a birthday sentiment, but the font and the size of sentiment stamp didn't look good with large images. So I changed my mind and decided to use the simple but big sentiment using the thank you for being new stamp from Hero Arts. Today I'm going to use my favorite watercolor paper, Artist cold pressed 140 pound watercolor paper. Since the cold pressed watercolor paper has a textured surface, you have more control over water as it stays longer on the surface compared to the hot pressed watercolor paper. I'm going to draw some guidelines along the A2 size scrap panel using a pencil so I know which areas will be my actual card. Since I can see through a wood stamp to see exactly where I'm going to position my image, I'll be using the Stamper Magic Stamp Positioner from EK Success today, which comes with an image seat and positioner. I put the image seat so that it lines up right against the edges of my positioner. Then I'm going to ink up my stamp with black ink and put the edges of my stamp against the edges of the positioner and press straight down. Then I'm positioning my image seat over the watercolor panel so that the sentiment is where I want it to be. Here I'm using my TCQ ruler to help me align my sentiment in straight. Then I'm going to re-ink my stamp with black ink and remove my image seat. I'm holding my positioner in place and putting my stamp right into the corner of the positioner. Then I'm going to push right down and stamp the sentiment onto my watercolor paper. To get a nice and intense impression, I'm going to ink up the stamp with black ink and stamp it one more time. If you don't care about the placement of your sentiment too much, you can totally stamp your sentiment directly on the paper without using this stamp positioner. Now it's time for stamping the images. Since I'm going to color my images with watercolors, I'll be using a waterproof black ink. Here I have two black ink pads from Hero Arts. Since I wasn't sure which one would work for my stamping, I'm going to test out my black inks by stamping the images on my scrap paper. Looks like my intense black ink is not intense anymore as the ink pad is getting dry. So I decided to use my Hero Arts Hero Hues black ink as I wanted to make sure my stamping impression is good and intense. 
If you like no line watercoloring, you could stamp your images with a Timur's Distress Ink Antique Linen or any light colored dye ink from Herald's. I'm going to ink up my sunflower stamp with black ink and stamp the image onto the image sheet. This positioner or handle is now going to indicate where I'm going to stamp. That means I can decide exactly where I want to put my image. Then I'm going to tape down my panel temporarily so it don't shift when I'm trying to position things. I'm going to position my image seat over the right bottom corner of my watercolor paper. Once I figure out the placement of my first image, I'm going to put my positioner in place and remove the image seat. Next, I'm going to ink my stem with a black ink and I'm going to line up the stem against the positioner and press straight down. I didn't get a good clean impression on some of the stamping because of the texture of the watercolor paper. So I'm going to ink the stamp again with the same black ink and stamp the image again. But you can skip the double stamping if you want. I'm going to repeat the same process until I complete my entire background with the sunflowers around the sentiment. I will keep using my Stamper Magic stamp positioner so I can control spacing between each flower. But you can totally stamp your images without the stamp positioner if you want. This stamp positioner allows you to position your wood mounted stamp perfectly in a very specific spot. It is also great for multi-step stamping to achieve a nice and intense impression in case you don't have the misty stamping tool. You can see that I can easily figure out what angle I want my image at and how far I want it from the edges using this stamp positioner. Once my stamping is done, I'm going to dry my panel using heat tool to make sure I don't get my ink smudged. I'll be taping down my watercolor paper onto the Altenew watercolor palette using wash tape. This will help me rotate my panel easily without touching the panel while watercoloring. Now it's time for watercoloring. Here I have my Mijello Mission Gold 36 watercolor set, round watercolor paintbrush, size 3, clean water, and towel ready on my desk. I'm going to start by mixing paints on my watercolor palette with my wet paintbrush so I can easily grab the colors I want. You can also test out the color on a scrap watercolor paper to see the actual color. Once I pick up some pigment from my watercolor palette, I'm applying light color first for the base layer. I'm loosely watercoloring the each petal with less pigment using my damp paintbrush. You can start by wetting your watercolor paper first with clean water and add pigment if you want. Then I'll be bringing darker colors to the bottom of each petal and where two petals meet together to enhance the shading areas. If you added too much pigment onto your image, you can pick up the color using a towel or you can pull the color out from the darker stroke using a wet paintbrush. Next, I'm going to go over the paint to diffuse the color using my wet paintbrush. If you don't like any harsh lines, you can soften the hard edges using a moist paintbrush even after the paint is already dry. Please note that I'm leaving some white areas to indicate the highlights on the petals in the beginning, but they mostly will be covered with some light shade of colors in the end. Depending on your preference, you can let the first layer dry before adding the second layer. But this time, I'm not going to care about the drying time. Some of the layers will dry before applying darker colors, but I will leave some of the layers still wet to achieve the unexpected blending effect. To create a gradient look of the color, it's important to remove the paint from your watercolor paintbrush and wipe off the excess paint using a towel in between before you pull out the color. Again, I'm not going to care about this too much for today's project. By the way, I placed a piece of print paper underneath my right hand to protect my project. It will also prevent from picking up some ink or paint and transferring it to my project. Usually, you can get a better result when you stay away from adding too many layers on your watercolor images. Since this is the flower image with a small sized petals, I'm not going to worry about adding more layers and details that much. You can always go over the image to diffuse the color or to add more color. You just need to control the amount of water you add to the paint. Adding different color is also a great way to create some interest to your image. I know I used the sunflower stamp, but I'm not using a yellow color as my primary color. I'm using various colors here, permanent yellow, yellow-orange, 
rose madder, crimson lake. Even I used some brown color. Now I'm going to turn on some music and speed up the video so you can watch me color. I was watching a Korean TV show with my husband while watercoloring and it took me about one and a half hour to watercolor all of my flowers. To add interest on my background, I'm going to split up the background with some of the paint colors I used on my flowers. On second thought, I decided to put together my card first to keep my splatters nice and clean. I'm going to use my heat tool to speed up the drying time. But you can let your watercolor paper air dry if you want. I'm going to take off my watercolor paper from the seat and peel off the wash tape from the paper. I'm cutting my watercolor paper into 4 and a quarter inch by 5 and a half inches, trimming off the excess edges using my Timor's paper trimmer. This trimmer is one of my favorite paper crafting tools. It cuts paper like butter. Next, I'm mounting my watercolor panel on the A2 size top folding white card base using double sided tape. You could use a regular glue tape if you want. A strong adhesive will help your watercolor paper flat and sturdy. I'm going to stamp the sentiment inside my card. I chose the fun sentiment from the snarky mix and match messages stamp set from Hero Arts, which goes well with the sentiment I stamped on the front of my card. 
I'm using my mini misty stamping tool along with the TSQ ruler to stamp my sentiment in a perfect placement. I noticed that my sentiment on the front is not that intense even though I stamped it twice. So I'm going to fix my stamping by coloring in the areas using a black pen. This is a quick and easy way to enhance your black stamping. To create splatters, I'm going to pick up some paint from my palette using a small paintbrush and tap the body of my paintbrush with my finger. If you don't want your colors to mix up together, make sure to dry the previous splatters using a heat tool before you add the next splatters using a different color. If you are not good at creating splatters, you could use the tip of your colored pen to add tiny dots. I'm also going to use Hero Arts Unicorn White Ink Spray as I wanted to add some details on my dark flowers. There are two ways to flick white ink onto the background. You can take a paintbrush full of ink, hold it over the background, and tap it. Or you can also put ink on a stamping block and then flick it off the block with a paintbrush. If you are not a fan of splattering ink, you could add tiny dots using a white gel pen instead to mimic the look. Of course, you can leave the background clean without splatters if you want. Next, I will let my watercolor card aside for about 10 minutes to let it air dry. I used my white gel pen to add some thin lines on some of my flower petals. Then I'm going to cover my watercolor card with a print paper and place it under some heavy book overnight to make it flat. This is it for today. If you watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. I hope this video was inspiring or informative for you guys. I will link all the products and everything that I talked about in the description box below. If you have any questions, just write them below and I'd be happy to answer them for you. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more card making videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye bye!